Hi folks, welcome to the Prepared Homestead. This is Travis. Thank you all for stopping by to watch. Man, I felt like I had to donate a child or a kidney today. Uh, ended up having to go to the lumber store, the lumber yard, and uh, purchase a, about a pickup load of lumber. And let me tell you, it hurts. It hurts especially knowing that Hardly a year ago, if I'd bought that same amount of lumber, it would have been about half of the price. Uh, and for those of you that have done building projects, maybe you build for a living, or you're homesteading and you're always needing an extra 2 by 4 you know what I'm saying. Um, the cost of lumber is, is awful. But you know what? It's not just the cost of lumber. It's the cost of just about everything. Some of it's because of the supply and demand. Maybe there's not enough supply uh, feeding that, but there's also inflation happening. It's going on. A lot of prices right now and stuff are inflated. And so there's a, a, lot, of, a lot of difficulty for some people to, for a lot of us, to get a hold of certain products uh, just because it's hard to find them. And then there's this difficulty of paying for them because whether or not you even have the money to pay for it, it just hurts. It hurts to pay almost two dollars a round for you know five, five, six. It hurts to pay seven, eight, and even nine dollars for a two by four, a two by four stud that you shouldn't be paying any more than around three dollars for. This isn't going away, and we haven't talked about it in the last couple of days, but the whole Suez Canal stuck ship. A lot of people are like, ah, well, they got it. It was only there for about a week. It's unstuck. Everything's back to normal. It's okay. You know, kind of like the, the whole health crisis. Well, you know, numbers are going down. Everything's back to normal. Life as we know it is just going on. It's fine. Quit worrying about stuff. Well, it's not gone back to normal. And experts are saying that if even not considering all the other stuff going on, just that stuck ship in the Suez Canal, that it's going to take weeks, maybe months, for shipping to go back to normal. Uh, so stick with me because we're going to talk about that and, and how it is affecting us right now. Um, would ask you, if you wouldn't mind, to go ahead and click the like and subscribe button to this channel so that you can stay updated. I will soon be uh, starting a secondary backup channel. Uh, and I'll let you know when that happens. But I also have an active channel over on Rumble. Uh, and that's my real backup channel. So if you want to go over to Rumble, and I'll leave a link in the description below. And you can sign up there for free. They have an app just like YouTube. It's very user friendly. And you can subscribe to my channel over there. And, and I will occasionally be posting videos over there that that are much more free speech. A lot of it will just be posting the stuff that I share here on face uh, on YouTube. But... You know, there are some things that obviously that YouTube doesn't allow me to talk about, as we've talked about in the last few days. So uh, you can go there. So this Suez Canal ship, you know, I've, I've actually had people comment to me, oh, you made a big deal when it first happened. And now they got the thing unstuck. You know, it was only about a week that it was stuck. It's, it's, it's unstuck. Everything's back to normal. Well, it's not how it works. Um, and I'm no expert in this, but there were thousands of ships uh, that were backed up because of that, uh, just to begin with. Uh, all over, you know, south, north of that, of that canal that were backed up. It's going to take a while to filter those through. It's kind of like stopping a train. You don't just immediately start it back up again and it hits the, the speed that it was originally going. It takes a while especially an old locomotive, and that's what this, these ships have been sitting there, and, and it's going to take a bit to get all these ships through. You also have to consider that we, something that we talk about frequently on here, that this is a, we're, we're talking about a fragile system, a fragile infrastructure, um, not just here in America, but across the, the, the globe. When it comes to our, our shipping, when it comes to uh, supplies, you know, uh, creating these supplies, moving these supplies. Um, it's all very, well, it's very delicate. And it's all on a knife's edge. And it doesn't take much to cause it to kind of topple over. And we're dealing with, well, the shutdowns 
and slowdowns and and business shutdowns due to the the health crisis uh, a lot of businesses still aren't up to you know full speed a lot of factories um, i have personally talked with uh, people talked to a guy yesterday uh, they said that the company that he works for they're having a hard time getting people to come back uh, they're having a hard time to get people to, to fill slots. He said they're, they're not under any restrictions. He said they can, they can operate at, you know, full capacity. He said, but they're not operating at full capacity because no one wants to work for them because you're actually going to make more money if you stay at home, draw on the extra unemployment benefits, uh, than to go back to work. He said, so they're having a difficulty of getting people to, to actually work for them. They're making more money just sitting at home because of the extensions on all these uh, unemployment benefits and, and, and other benefits for those that were laid off due to the health crisis. And then there's places that are just still shut down and there's places that, that lost so much money that they're, they're not going to, to, to bounce back, maybe ever. <clears throat> so you're dealing with that problem. You're also dealing with you know, an economy that's starting to, to see cracks in it a lot more. And so that's hurting things. And then over the last few months, we've had this uh, shipping container uh, shortage, which is a real issue. Uh, you know, the big shipping containers that they put on boats and they put on the back of, of semis. And, and that's where the vast majority of everything that you use and everything that you touch and everything that goes through your hands, uh, a lot of it goes through these shipping containers. And, well, there aren't any. Um, there's not coming, not, not empty ones coming across from China and we're not able to send empty ones back. They're just, there's just not any, uh, shipping containers. And there's, so there's a big shortage there. There's a lot of things happening. There's weather related incidences across the planet. That's, that's caused a, a slowdown or, or a bump in the road or a hiccup, uh, in various different industries. And so what we're left with is not one big apocalyptic event that a lot of people will sit back and wait for, a lot of people think will happen. Those kind of events are possible, but usually it's not one big event that causes a system to start to collapse. It's multiple small events, uh, whether orchestrated or not, that causes you know, great disruption to a, a supply system. And uh, whether it's the logistics, whether it's the, the harvesting of the raw materials, whether it's the manufacturing of them into component parts or, you know, building them into the final product uh, or the, the logistics of just moving them around. Uh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of speed bumps and hiccups along the way lately. And so we're seeing problems. Uh, you know, the whole Suez Canal thing, back to that, you know, yeah, it's over. Everything's back to normal. No, it's actually not. Um, you know, some of, look at some of these headlines, and there's a lot more than just these, uh, of talking about how it could take weeks or months uh, to, to, to get back up to speed uh, because of this. And then if you look at the, the, the possible amount of money that's been lost because of this in, in the global economy, uh, tens probably into the hundreds of billions of dollars, uh, and experts are saying it may take months or years before they finally figure out exactly how much money was completely lost in this. Uh, so this was a big event, okay? This was, was a major, major event, and it's still the, the, the ripples uh, from that event are going to be felt for quite a while. Uh, probably just as major uh, to the global economy and supply chain uh, as the whole health crisis to begin with. So... Get ready for higher priced stuff. I mean, you've already been dealing with it. Groceries are up. Uh, everything's up. I had to buy a tire for, for the car uh, today, for one of our vehicles today. And um, this was just my fault. I had priced that tire uh, a while back. I knew I was going to need it. It, it. And so I had, had priced it, knew what I needed, and then I kind of forgot about it. Okay? I remembered about it a couple of days ago, so I called the guy up and said, yeah, you know, that tire that I asked you about, I need you to go ahead and order that tire. He said, well, he said, the price has gone up again, another $10. Uh, okay, so it's $10. Well, of course I need it, so I'll go ahead and order it. But think about that. Uh, you know, that kind of increase in just a short amount of time, 
uh, over and over again on nearly everything that we, we, we buy, it's going to start affecting us. I mean, you look at food. Uh, food in the grocery store has gone up anywhere between 3 and 15%, depending on the product. Um, some of it's more. That's hurting the budget. You know, when you figure that the average person lives paycheck to paycheck, um, take 3% of their, their paycheck away. Take 10% of their paycheck away. See, it, that, that's kind of how it works, and it's going to hurt them. Gas prices, gas prices have just skyrocketed. I think they've come down a little bit maybe in some places, but they've still, they've gone up, you know, substantially in the last three months. A lot of things are going up, and without even going into the, all the details of why, because we could name many reasons why. There's a lot of reasons, and none of them are really good reasons. Some of them are just normal ebbs and flows of, a, of an economy and, a, and a, you know, different cycles in the, the system. But a lot of these are very damaging uh, things that's happened to our supply chain, very damaging things that's happened to our economy. Um, you know, another article I was looking at that coffee and toilet paper, they were already, uh, then of course you guys remember the whole toilet paper apocalypse, you know, people buying hundreds of, you know, rolls of toilet paper. Um, they're saying that the whole shipping container shortage, uh, and then also on top of that, the Suez Canal blockage, uh, we're going to start seeing some shortages, most likely in toilet paper again and possibly coffee, oil, and a few other things that are greatly affected by this. Take a look at this picture here. This was something that uh, at a local Walmart uh, close to me uh, at the, the coffee aisle. I've never seen a Walmart coffee aisle look like that. Um, prices are going up. Uh, our daughter, she works at a, at a store and they sell coffee. There's a, it's a local company uh, here in the Ozarks that, that uh, roasts coffee and then they sell it there in their store that she works at. And she was saying that the, the guy was coming in and he said he's having a hard time getting his product um, to, to sell and that the prices, he's gonna have to start raising his prices because what he is getting, the costs have gone up. Uh, and so there's, there's a couple of things there on the coffee, but there's a lot of stuff going on. And because most people in this country like I said, their, their, their own economy, their personal economy is on a knife's edge. The vast majority. You know, if you're not, you know, if you could, if you could lose a few paychecks, you know, a few monthly checks, uh, go a few months without one. Uh, if you've got, you know, you're, you're enough money in the bank and everything to live off of for a while, then good for you. And you should be proud of yourself that you are uh, head and shoulders above the average American. But the fact is, is the average American isn't that. Uh, even what would be considered middle class Americans, a lot of them, they live paycheck to paycheck because of the amount of debt that they're in. And so you start increasing the prices of things, and then there are shortages on top of the price increase. Um, adding to that with all the other things that's going on that we talk about here on a daily basis. Um, this is not a good situation. This in itself is a certain level of SHTF. This is why we prepare. This is why we stock up. You know, the coffee thing doesn't affect us that much. We drink coffee, don't get me wrong. Uh, but I buy my coffee in bulk. Uh, I buy it from a, uh, I buy it green. The beans, in, they're, they're green and I roast them myself. And I checked my supplier, I actually made an order this morning because I was hearing all this stuff. I'm like, ah, I better check. And so I checked with my supplier and they are going up. He did have some uh, beans. He's out of California. It's a distribution supplier. And they did have some that were priced the old that they had left over before these, you know, new shipments started coming in and the prices are increased. So I did order some more uh, just to have a few, little bit more. But if you're able to stock up more, uh, you need to do that. And we've been talking about that. Not just the long-term preps, uh, maybe short-term stuff. As silly as it sounds, because we probably all laughed at it, do you have enough toilet paper? And if you don't, do you have a backup plan for that? Because you don't have to use toilet paper. That's just the modern standard. They didn't have toilet paper back in the old days. So, do you have coffee? And if you don't, are you okay with that? If, if coffee is really important to you, I mean, you don't have to have it to live off of. 
but some of the people around you may rather you have it if you're kind of like me and you miss a cup of coffee in the morning. You need to be really focused on this, folks. Uh, some of you may have uh, some stimulus money, some tax return money right now, keeping your pantry stocked up and filled, working on that, that one-year working pantry, uh, which basically is your, your normal pantry. You, you go to the kitchen, you cook. A lot of you people have a little pantry shelf. Maybe you have a little room. Whatever the ingredients, the things that you keep on a regular basis to eat normally off of, you should try to keep at least a one-year supply of that. Most of those items have at least a one-year shelf life. Some don't, and those are the exceptions. But if you're able to keep them for, you know, have a one-year shelf life of those items, you need to keep at least a one-year supply of your regular daily pantry. Then you should work towards a two to three year supply on top of that one year supply of just backup stuff. And this is your canned foods, this is your dry goods, your, your beans, your rice, your wheat, your corn, uh, you know, ketchups and mayonnaise and honey and, and, and flour and sugars and, uh, you know, pastas and oatmeal and things that you can you can store away that that you have at least a two to three two year supply minimum of those kind of things and that way if you have a one year prepper pantry uh, which is just your normal pantry that has a year supply in it and then you have two more years of stuff that's a total of three years of food that you're going to have stocked up <clears throat> on top of that included into that two year supply it'd be good to have some long term food stuff uh, this is that freeze-dried stuff that has a 25, 30-year shelf life. Um, that's good to have. I wouldn't make that your primary, unless, you know, maybe you have the money because that stuff is more expensive. Maybe it's just more convenient for you. But having a little bit of that stuff just mostly for the convenience is very helpful. A um, little time for a plug. <laughs> if you're seriously interested in that kind of stuff, you can go to preparewithtravis.com. Uh, and you can, I work with my Patriot Supply, and you can pick up buckets of that freeze-dried stuff for a, a very reasonable price for what you're getting. But, but getting prepared for what's coming and what's happening is serious. Not just with food, with things that you need around the house. You also need things that, you know, to prepare that food. Do you have things to preserve? Do you have the seeds to grow in your, your garden? If you haven't bought your seeds yet, you better jump on it. Uh, seeds normally sell out. A lot of times seeds sell out on normal years. Last year they sold out fast and I've already heard of companies saying that they're sold out of a lot of seeds already. Uh, so if you don't have your seeds you need to get it. Do you have the things to preserve the stuff you're growing? Do you have a pressure cooker? Do you have canning jars, lids, rings? Uh, do you have the ability to, to smoke, maybe a cold smokehouse to, to, to preserve meats? Um, you know, a, a root cellar or some type of makeshift shift system uh, to preserve these things longer term. Uh, you know, there are alternative ways that you can make a, you know, some type of root cellar or system to keep things cold. You know, a basement, a, a garage, or, or even just a, a freezer in the, you know, an old broken down chest freezer in the, buried in the ground. There's a lot of ways that you can do it. You're going to you're going to be happy you did because even if the world doesn't end and it's not the grand apocalypse like it's in some kind of dystopian movie just the fact that the prices of food going up will most likely continue to go up and a lot of products becoming harder and harder to find having that food supply in your kitchen and in your garage and in your basement or wherever you put it uh, it's going to be beneficial to you and it's not too late to start doing this. Time's running out. You're going to pay more for it now than you would have 12, 18 months ago. Uh, but you can still do it. And if you're smart about it, uh, it you can stock up pretty quickly on stuff. Uh, start with the basics. Get a good supply of some basics, uh, the cheaper stuff. And then start adding seasoning, things that's going to flavor those. Because uh, you don't want to just eat plain beans and rice for two years. Uh, you know, work on things that you can add to it and, and add some flavor to it. Uh, because <sighs> look at all the stuff in the news, folks. Yeah, you're, you'll thank me and, and you'll be happy that you have uh, a little bit of insurance policy 
stocked away in your closet in your basement because in the end that's really all it is it's just another insurance policy all right folks thank you all for watching i'll catch you in the next video